And actually, we're going to move on to, I actually, before we move on, I found an article, the only thing I could find on Peyton Manning jerseys that were not Amazon and lids trying to sell me Peyton Manning jerseys is that um, the 2014 season, Peyton Manning had the top selling jersey in five states. Those five states, Idaho, um, Colorado, Utah, Nebraska, and I think Wyoming. Is that Wyoming? I think it's Wyoming. So, yeah, it was popular in the West Coast. Mm-hmm. But he sold, like you said, he sold a lot of jerseys for Denver and that alone. It's all about money in this business. It's all about the money when you get down to it. But we're going to move on to our final topic. And I'm going to throw out a situation for you. And this is Madden Ricky coming back to life. What's the chance, Mark, that the New England Patriots not just trade back into the first round to try to get Robert Candici, but they trade with either the Cardinals or the Broncos to send Jimmy Garoppolo there for that pick? I would say zero. Um, yeah, I, the, the Patriots don't, they don't do that. They don't trade up. They trade down. That's their business. Yeah, they would love to have a first-round pick. Um, Because they're going to be waiting a long time before they get to make a pick in this draft. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine them trading up into the first round again. Uh, Yeah, Robert can beat you. He's a very good talent. He's going to fall, but I don't think he's going to fall all the way down to, you know, the very end of the draft. Someone, there's been enough time where people are going to get over his issues. And someone's going to take him in, you know, the 20 range. Mm -hmm. They're going to say it's been enough. Could someone possibly trade, you know, from the, you know, further back 20 to get to the very beginning? Sure. Maybe someone wants to go and grab him that way. But I can't imagine that the the Patriots trade all the way from the back of the second round into the first round just to get him. They already don't have enough picks. Mm -hmm. It's just not something that's smart or logical for them. Well, the way I see it is with Kem first off, he's either going to be like, and I still don't know where to peg him. Is he Shane Ray or Randy Gregory? And when I say that, Shane Ray went in the late first round to the Denver Broncos. Broncos did what you just talked about. They traded up to, I want to say, the 20s to get him. Whereas Randy Gregory fell to day number two and he went to the Dallas Cowboys and, and it was 23 where Shane Ray got drafted, but that's where the Broncos traded up for him. Which one is Kim going to be? And with the Patriots, the, my first thought was, okay, the Patriots don't trade up. However, is this the year they break the mold? And this ESPN article that we're using for this topic, does it really come to light? Because of deflate gate, they don't have that first overall pick. Here's how I map it out. The only teams they're going to be able to trade with, the Cardinals, the Panthers, and the Broncos. Two of those teams, guess what they're going to be asking for? Hey, how about that backup? How about that backup you ain't using? Huh? Huh? I mean, the Cardinals are going to be, hey, Carson Palmer's getting older. How about that Garoppolo kid? The Broncos are going to be like, hey, we got Mark Sanchez. Not that good. How's that Garoppolo kid? The Panthers are the wild card. They could ask for something else. But not only do the Patriots got to figure, would have to figure out who are we going to trade with, but also my second thought was, who are they going to trade? Because if we yeah. look at the trade that they just made for the black unicorn in, um, in Bennett, they didn't trade players. They traded picks. They didn't give the bears any players. They gave the bears picks. So I, I don't see the Patriots trading up because they're not going to give away their assets like a Jimmy Garoppolo. 
and they're not going to give away picks that, like you said, they don't have enough to give away. Mm -hmm. I I think the worst thing, unfortunately, for, well, fortunately and unfortunately for the, the New England Patriots is Jimmy Garoppolo didn't get a chance to start. You know, yeah, they're happy that Tom Brady wasn't suspended. But at the same time, you got to be a little unhappy that you didn't get the opportunity to showcase your trade bait. Because if you got to let Jimmy Garoppolo start two, three games, without a doubt, assuming he didn't mess it up completely, teams like the Broncos, the L.A. Rams, the 49ers, these are teams that are making phone calls trying to get this guy because at least they saw him play. Even if he didn't do perfect, they saw him play, they know what they have to work with, they know what they can fix. There's no game tape of any worth on this player right now. you got to look to the preseason. You can't make good judgments on the preseason on a guy who you want to come in and be the face of your franchise. So if you can, st- if you can stash him behind Carson Palmer, that's pretty good. That's not a bad deal at all. But if you got to be Denver and you're saying, hey, you're just going to join the three-headed quarterback battle of you know, Colin Kaepernick, Mark Sanchez, and now you, I don't think that's a good thing. Well, let's be that's honest. Not if, work out. if the Broncos made a trade with the Patriots for Jimmy Garoppolo, that trade, and I use air quotes because nothing's finalized yet because of the money, if they make a deal with the Patriots, Kaepernick is never going to hit Denver soil unless the 49ers are playing in Denver. But, yeah, I mean, to me, the only one that I the only one I could see making a big push for Garoppolo would be the Cardinals, because I don't think Denver wants to trade away um, their first round pick. And the Panthers are sitting there like. I know they didn't win the Super Bowl, but they're sitting there going, okay, the one main thing we could use is wide receivers that don't drop the ball in the Super Bowl, and Tom Brady doesn't have any wide receivers except for Julian Edelman and his gang of white guys. Yeah. Um, there's, there's just not, like, I don't know, there's no way I can see it happening for the first round. Uh, this isn't that much further back, but if they could possibly trade with another team that, you know, we talked about earlier that wants a quarterback, even though they don't need one, if they could pull something off with the Cowboys, maybe, mm-hmm. uh, you know, cause then you're not far from the first round. But the problem with that, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, I'm pretty sure this is the last year of his contract, right? He's been in the NFL for a little while now. So anywhere he goes, it's got to be a spot where he's going to start because otherwise you're just going to have a backup for like a year, maybe two, depending on how much is left in his contract. Um, you're just going to have this backup for a very short amount of time. And then he's going to leave because no matter what, he's going to leave new England. There's no doubt about that. He's not going to stay and back up Tom Brady again while Tom Brady plays until he's 80. He wants to go somewhere. He wants to start. He's upset that he didn't get the opportunity to start because Tom Brady had to get his suspension taken away and come back and actually start and win games. So he's not very thrilled about that, even though he should be. Uh, But, yeah, he's going to go and he's going to play somewhere. Garoppolo becomes a free agent in 2018. So two more seasons with the Patriots. Okay, so he's got a little bit more time. So I guess that backup role is not too bad. But still, it's only going to be two years before he's going looking for that starting job. And I mean, looking at his salary, he's not getting paid that much. He's he got paid what five five hundred seventy eight thousand last year. He's going to get six hundred eighty six thousand this year, and in two thousand seventeen, eight hundred twenty point zero seven seven thousand. So, not that like his cap hit hits a uh, one point one million in his last year. But that's because of like signing bonus and his workout bonus. But yeah, I mean, the thing is, the Patriots, what do they have to trade with? And to me, the only thing that people are going to look at and the only thing that people are going to have any kind of like, okay, we could we could trade that for him is Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, yeah, they've got. 
pieces on the defense, but why would you trade away unless they're going to say, hey, we could move a Dominique Easley who we drafted. I want to say it was 2014. They drafted him first in the first round. Yeah, let's move him. He's had flashes. However, he can't stay healthy. So we're going to try to move him to a team like Carolina so that we can replace him with Robert Kemdichie. But you're not going to get a player like that for a first-round pick. I mean, you got to look at, you know, they have a real piece that they're going to use in Bennett, and that was like a fourth round. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you don't get a guy who has injury issues for a first-round pick. That's just not going to happen. Um, so I, I do think there is value, though, to for the 40, or not 49ers, for the Patriots to think, hey, when is Tom Brady going to retire? Mm -hmm. And is it before we lose Jimmy Garoppolo? Because if it is, you know, if he's going to play three more years where you're only going to get two more on Jimmy Garoppolo, I think you do have to say, hey, we got to trade this guy at some point. Because we're not going to get anything out of him when he walks away. We're going to just be looking for a new backup. So why don't we look for that backup now and get rid of this guy and get like a second or a third round pick out of him. Mm -hmm. Get something. Because, like I said, once he walks away, you got nothing. Well, they've got a year before they can even start to think about that or force Tom Brady out the door, much like the pa the Packers, I almost said Patriots, the Packers did to Brett Favre when Aaron Rodgers is in town, but that ain't going to happen. Before we wrap this one up, Mark, is there any last things that we missed in this podcast? Um, I'm excited to watch Thursday Night Football on Twitter. Yes, I heard about that today. We're gonna watch, it's on Twitter. I, I'm just I'm saying it right now. I don't like. I just imagine Twitter just crashing. However, you want to hear the funny thing about that? Sure. You cannot watch it on Twitter via your phone. The reason why is Verizon owns the rights for, um, the, the cellular. Yeah, the mobile part of it. Yeah, I just I think about like think of a show like Game of Thrones, for example. Mm -hmm. When Game of Thrones has a big episode. Like coming up, um, you know, obviously they're paying us. The twenty fourth. So get this plug for them on the twenty fourth. <laughs> uh, I expect my HBO check now. Uh, well, we get free you know, HBO Go. I, I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> when they have this, HBO Go is going to crash because mm -hmm. HBO crashes every time there's a premiere or a finale. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like something that you have to pay for. You don't have to pay for Twitter. Twitter's free. Yeah. There's a lot more football. I would argue, you can argue differently if you want, but I would argue that there is a lot more football fans than there are Game of Thrones fans. But how many people are watching Thursday Night Football? But it's on Twitter. It's the first time you get the chance. I think that, like, that first game. That first game will crash, and then. Go for it. That first game will crash, and then everyone else will be like, eh, it's Thursday Night Football. These matchups suck. And then it'll be suck. like the Jaguars versus the Titans. Yep. And the color there. rush. Yeah. The, the Christmas color rush that made colorblind people uh, be like, I can't tell who's on what team Bills Jets. Yeah, it'll be interesting, that's for sure. But that's going to do it for the onside kick this weekend. I want to thank you guys, or this week, not this weekend. I want to thank you guys for checking us out, giving us a listen. If you're on SoundCloud, hit that heart button and that repost button. Also, follow us on SoundCloud because you get all of our full-length podcasts up to date notifying you when we post them exactly when i hit that button to post them to our soundcloud page if you're on youtube hit the subscribe button like i said during the primetime podcast as we record it earlier tonight we're aiming for a thousand i'm not even going to say what number we're at because that's probably going to change by the time you're hearing these words come out of my mouth so if you're listening on youtube hit that subscribe button please help us get to a thousand subscribers. We really appreciate the love and support we get from each and every subscriber. Go ahead, hit that like button, that subscribe button I already told you about. Go ahead, follow us on social media. Mark is at the with two E's, Mark Weber. I'm at Ricky Widmer. Then you can follow Sean Anderson, our social media guy for Most Valuable Podcast at Most Valuable Pod. Thank you guys once again for checking us out. And as always, 
Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.